Brothers and sisters, happy Sunday and welcome to our online service. Today is the 2nd of July and our sermon service today will be themed from Thessalonica 3, Standing Firm in Faith, delivered by Dr. Larry Jones. All core tool worship today will be taken from Psalm 18 and also from the song, How Firm Our Foundation. I will read it to you. Fear not, I am with thee. All be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and still will give thee aid and strengthen thee. Help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. When though fiery trials the path shall lie, my grace, all sufficient, will be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume, thy gold to revive. To start our service today, we're going to sing the song, As We Gather, that's going to be led by Ibu Bibit.
Brothers and sisters, let us bow our head and let us pray. We gather this day, O Lord, as people who seek your guidance, love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that lead to loving service. Create a new people in this place, so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is now time for us to enter our confession prayer. Before that, we are going to sing the song, Give Us Clean Hands, that's going to be led by Holy. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, and Spirit, come make us some. Let us bow our head and let us enter our confession prayer. Lord of abiding love and infinite patience, be with us this day. We have come from times of stress, difficulties, as well as times of hope and joy. We bring to you our concerns and our fears, and you offer your healing mercies. We confess that we haven't thought a whole lot about you, and we have let events and demands crowd you out of our thoughts and our actions. Yet when we come to this place, your house, we again kneel in contrition, seeking your forgiveness for our blindness and apathy. Turn our lives alone, Lord. Help us look again at the many ways in which you bless and care for us. Help us be people who will reach out to others in loving compassion. For we ask the thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, even though we are stubborn people, still God absolutely loves us. As a response of our confession and also as a way to praise our lords, we're going to sing the song, Just the Closer Walk with Thee, led by the Suharnos. Jesus. 
Brothers and sisters, giving an offering is a chance for us to show our gratefulness to the Lord about what's given us and also giving back a portion that He has already what He has already provided us with. Since today we have an online service, you can submit your offerings through the church uh, bank account, which will be displayed on the screen. Continuing our service, we're going to prepare ourselves for the family prayer. Before that, we're going to sing one song. O Lord, hear our prayer, led by Karen, and afterwards, Amanda will lead us in family prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you hear us when we pray. We thank you for the opportunity to come to you, bringing our burdens before you and receiving strength and comfort and hope and healing from you. All that we have is a gift from you and we praise you for it. And we also recognize our dependence on you for all that we need. Father, we come to you today with our hearts heavy for our brother, Patsirman, in the loss of his brother, Jasim Sampurba. We lift up his family, especially the wife and children of Pat Jasim Samporba, we ask that you would comfort the whole family and especially that they would 
during this time especially receive comfort and hope from you and rest in the knowledge that this is not the end and that you purchased hope and resurrection. Father, we look forward to the day when we will be reunited with our loved ones. But right now, our hearts are heavy and we ask for comfort from you. Father, we also want to bring before you those who are traveling, Patsirman as he goes to North Sumatra, and also uh, Pa Ed and Eddie and Owen as they're going to Moluku for our other friends who are traveling wherever they may be. We ask for safety. We ask for your hand of guidance. We also want to ask for your hand of guidance on our political leaders. You know that there's elections coming up next year both in Indonesia and in America and probably in other places as well. Lord, we want to ask that you would be guiding and we ask that the process would be peaceful, that people with different opinions would listen to one another and that the result of the elections and the political process would be fair and above board, and above all, Lord, that it would result in wise decisions and good leadership for the countries that are having these elections. We want to lift up Indonesia to you, especially our national and regional and local government leaders. We ask that you would give them wisdom to govern well. Father, we also want to lift up our church and its leaders. We ask that you would give them wisdom to lead well. And Father, above all, we want our lives to glorify you. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to prepare for our sermon. Uh, today the sermon will be delivered by Dr. Larry Jones. We're going to sing one song to prepare ourselves, led by Jerry, He Will Hold Me Fast. Me fast for my 
my Savior loves me so. International Christian Fellowship. I'm delighted to be together with you again this morning and have a chance to reflect a little bit on God's Word with you. Text me when you get home. Have you ever said that to someone? Has someone ever said it to you? You know, when our kids visit us here in, in uh, Texas, where Linda and I are living now, when they go home, whether they are just going to drive a couple hours away, or whether they get on a plane and they fly half a continent away. We always ask them, please text us. Please let us know that you get home safe. Uh, we, you know, when, when we love people we, and, and they are experiencing the dangers of a journey, uh, whether it, it, you know, it, it could be an accident or someone getting sick, we, we just want to know that they're home safe. Uh, that, that's a natural human, uh, uh, yeah, human desire, I think. When, when Linda and I were living in Papua in the 1980s, uh, it took about two months uh, to get a letter uh, exchange uh, for us to write a letter to, to our uh, family members at home in the United States, and then to receive an answer from them. The very fastest it, it could happen is about two months. And so those letters were a treasure. Hearing from our family, uh, making sure they were okay, that was a that was a uh, a precious gift to us when people took time to write us and and send us news and let us know that everyone was doing fine back home. Well, our passage this morning in First Thessalonians chapter three is Paul's testimony of this same kind of experience of waiting to hear news from people he cared about. In this case, it was the Thessalonian church, and he start uh, he starts off. Uh, you know, with these words, he says, brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned, being separated from you for a short time in person, but not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. And when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. And we sent Timothy, who is your brother and co-worker in God's service. So although Paul mentions Athens here, most scholars think he was writing from Corinth, where he had established a strong church planting presence after leaving Athens. Uh, unlike Linda and me, when we ask our kids to tell us when they get home, Paul was not concerned about the dangers of a road trip. Rather, he was concerned because he knew the Thessalonian church was facing social pressures and persecution because they believed in Jesus. Hear his words. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. 
In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it's turned out that way, as you may well know. For that reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. Well, you all know what it's like to pay a price for choosing to follow Jesus. It's not always imprisonment or burning at the stake or being eaten by lions. We all know of people who were rejected by their families because they chose to change their religion and to publicly follow Jesus. Some of you have had your career or business affected by the fact that you are a Christ follower. You know, being a religious minority in an intensely religious context like Indonesia, Malaysia, or India, or even in an intensely atheistic context like China, it brings pressure and social vulnerability on God's people. Paul said we were destined for this. It is part of our appointed lot as God's people in this lost world. He has sovereignly chosen us to place us in these hard circumstances where we can be a light in otherwise dark places. When it's hard, we can take comfort in remembering this. A few weeks ago, I was in, uh, in India, in Chennai, and was meeting with uh, the leaders of an Indian mission there. And as we, after our meeting, as we were going to close in prayer, uh, what one of our Indian brothers said, please pray for our brother Nelson, who, who was also sitting at the table with us. He said, Nelson is on the wanted list back home in our city because of his involvement in the translation of scriptures into the Karkod language. Karkod is a major uh, language in South India. It is part of a warrior caste and a very prestigious uh, caste. And so translating scripture into a, a, a prestigious Hindu caste, uh, the language of a, of a prestigious Hindu caste was very controversial. And, uh, and, and because the gospel is starting to get traction when people read the scriptures in their language there, then uh, th th there has been pushback by religious authorities, by civil authorities. And so Nelson, our brother in India, ha has had to, to keep a very low profile and, not, uh, and, and, and to be careful not to be seen in public places for fear that he would be arrested for having uh, translated scripture into that language. That's the kind of, of pressure. That's the kind of pressure that, uh, that Paul was talking about. He was concerned that the Thessalonians were, uh, uh, you know, were experiencing that kind of pressure, and he did not know how they were holding up. Well, Paul continues. He says, I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. Now, Paul was concerned because the Thessalonians were his friends, and he loved them. He also was concerned because he had invested in them. He helped found their church. He did not want the church to collapse or wilt, and his investment there to have been for nothing. Now, Paul was concerned about legacy. This is a natural human feeling. All of us long for our lives to have meaning and to have impact that outlives us. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes that God has placed eternity in our hearts. I regularly read the book of Ecclesiastes because it helps me to have a balanced perspective on my life. You know, there are things we cannot control. Once we turn our job over to a successor, we can't control how our work will be stewarded. I remember after I relinquished my, my role overseeing our Bible translation consultant group in C Company uh, to my successor, it was really only within about a month that a, a program that I had launched and invested a massive amount of time in was summarily disbanded. And, uh, and, and you know, people were, 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 were let go, they were laid off, and the 
program was gone. I, this was a program to equip uh, scholars around the world, Bible scholars, to use their knowledge to help translators in their country to check their work for faithfulness. Uh, there are people in Indonesia, in India, uh, in uh, Nigeria, in the Congo, in Angola. There were many, many different countries where we had trained scholars and we had momentum to train many more. Uh, and yet, uh, just shortly after I turned my job over to the person that I, I had groomed and trusted to do this work, he uh, pulled the plug and, uh, and, and set aside a program that I felt very passionate about. I was so crushed and troubled uh, to see the pain of those who had lost their jobs, to see the uh, disorientation of the scholars who were in the middle of their being trained uh, to do work in supporting Bible translation. All of it reminded me that, that this reminded me that, that, that we do not know what those who will come after us will do with our work. Uh, we, you know, we can, we, we have to be faithful to do our very best in our time. And when we, and when we hand that baton off to the next person, we have, we have to let it go and trust God, no matter what their decisions are, because sometimes their decisions are very different than ones we would have made. And that, you know, we also can't control the choices of our adult children. This is a painful lesson that Linda and I have learned as well. In, you know, the, 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 you know, as our children grow up, uh, you know, we have less and less scope to influence. Uh, we, we, you know, our advice is not sought. Our, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we certainly cannot guide or uh, or shape our children's lives as adults as we did when they were when they were small and in our home. So in, you know, in, in all these ways, all these situations, whether it's when we turn over a job to a successor, whether it is uh, our own children who we are releasing to live as adults in the world, in all these things, the very best we can do is to choose to be faithful, wise, and loving in the moment. And then we pray for the people and the things that matter to us. That's what that, that's what God gives us, and of course, that's what Paul also was you know was concerned for. He did not want his investment to be uh, you know to disappear, and so he was concerned about this. And he will ultimately he will pray about it as well, pray for the, the Thessalonians, but he was concerned and wanting to follow up, hoping that all that he had worked for was not in vain. So Paul continues his testimony with these words. He says. Timothy has just now come back to us from, uh, from you, and he's brought good news about your faith and your love. He's told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us, just as we long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now, we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? You know, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 25, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Paul was so happy to hear good news about his friends in, 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 in uh, Thessalonica. He had heard this good news and it gave him strength and hope to face his own trials with more grace. He says, now that I hear you live, I, you know, I live much more intensely. He says, we really live because you are standing firm in the Lord. You know, this, this should be a lesson for us too, shouldn't it? Yeah, I would urge you, please choose to stay in touch with the people that you care about. Now, I've known so many people over the years who were good friends who have simply walked out of our lives when they moved to a new location, when they changed jobs or changed the church they worship in. Now, you can't stay in touch with everyone, but you can discern before the Lord who he wants you to bless with an ongoing, occasional connection. 
You know, our son Caleb recently attended his 20th high school reunion. I can hardly believe it. And he he hasn't stayed in touch with all of his classmates, but he has periodically connected with a circle of them over the years. And those young men who are now all middle-aged or moving into middle age, they're in their 30s, they are all blessed by their long friendship with one another. You know, in a similar way, I have a book where I list the needs of those uh, God has called me to pray for. I can't pray for, I cannot pray for everyone. The world is too big and the, and the needs are too acute. But I have a, but I have a, uh, a, a book that you can see right here that has lists. It has lists of people with different needs. I categorize uh, the lists according to the needs. So people who, uh, who are bereaved, who have lost a loved one, have, have their own page. People who are suffering with chronic pain and illness have their own page. Uh, you know, the, the, I, I pray for my, you know, for all of my C company colleagues as well. Those those with whom I work, pray for those who need a job, who are who are looking for work, uh, and pray for those who. Uh, I have a list for those who are are young couples who are longing to have children, and also single people who are longing to get married. I, you know, it's not everyone, it's not a generic prayer. I have specific names in each of those categories, and those are the people that I pray for. So in a similar way, I would just invite you to be attentive, to be attentive of those whom God desires you to, uh, uh, to stay connected with, uh, those who, whether it's connection in prayer, but also connection in an occasional note or a phone call. Uh, those connections are treasures. They are blessings. As Solomon wrote, uh, like cold water, like cold water in a dreary land is, is good news from a distant place. Further, I, I would, you, you parents and you children, adult children, there are people you need to pray for, especially. You know, parents, I, I guarantee you, you will have a greater appetite for connection with your adult children than they will have for connection with you. Let me say that again. You will have a greater appetite for connection with your adult children than they will have for connection with you. That is just a, a painful reality you need to cope with. And you, you, you will need to give your children sp the space they need. Uh, however, you still need to reach out and, and keep that connection with them. Adult children, you need to understand this and honor your parents by connecting with them a little more than you need yourself because they need it. Solomon or Paul, Paul wrote, night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to, uh, to see you. You know, sometimes when you're far from someone, you haven't heard from them, the best thing you can do is to pray for them. And that's what Paul was doing. He was praying, first of all, that he might get a chance to see the Thessalonians. Uh, that, you know, this was his longing and something that he, was, he, uh, he, would, he hoped would happen. But he also knew that God had called him there in Corinth for an extended period. He stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, one of the longest stays of any of his of, uh, uh, recorded in the, in the missionary journeys in Acts. And so he knew he might not get back to see the Thessalonians for a while, but even so, he prayed for them. He'd been, and his first prayer was, God, I would love to see them again. I hope you will open the door for me to, you know, to, to, to visit them again soon. And then he also prayed for their souls. He said, may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. You know, Paul prayed for lots of love. 
for the Thessalonians. Did you hear that? May your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. He was in now, he was encouraged that they did love one another. That was part of Timothy's report. And he prayed that they would lo love each other even a whole lot more. You know, love is the, define, the defining characteristic of being a disciple of Jesus. When Christ uh, uh, had, uh, had that final meal in the upper room on Monday, Thursday night, he belabored this point. He mentioned the command to love one another six times six times in the space of those hours around his last Passover meal. And strikingly, Paul prays that Thessalonians will also love everyone else. It's not just a, a call to love their fellow believers, to love one another, but also to love their neighbors. There was probably a, a, a call here to love those who were troubling them because they were Christians. You know, it, it is in line with Jesus' command in the Sermon on the Mount to love your neighbor and love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You know, as important as loving one another is, it's probably the most important command that Jesus left his disciples. And he underscored it again and again and again. And yet, I find it startling how often uh, we Christians set aside this command uh, in preference to for some other priority. Uh, loving others needs to be the very first thing we think about when responding to a situation that annoys or angers us. It's the very first thing. So let's all try to remember this. Finally, in that I am far from you, I'm going to close our, our little meditation this morning by praying over you Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians. So let us close and, and, and let me pray for you together. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you may be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We hope today's sermon will be impactful for your life and with the ending of this sermon, we have also reached the end of our service today. We thank you once again for joining us online, especially we want to thank Dr. Larry Jones for delivering the word of God to us. And to close our service today, we're going to sing one song, Living for Jesus, that is going to be led by Just and his friends. Happy Sunday, everyone.
Happy Sunday, everybody. Hope you have a great week ahead.